Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Okay, I'm just basically going to say... Um, I had tried to put this video out the day, well, that Monday, but I don't know, I was having some computer problems or something, so I wasn't able to do too much of anything. I just got finished taping, oh, and I don't know what had happened. No, I'll take that back. I think I was, shit, I don't know what happened, y'all. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie or, or try to make a song. I don't know what, I know I did the video, and... I was going to try to do it and I got tired. I think then I tried to do it Tuesday. And I was having computer problems. That's what it was. But anyway, we're just going to go fly on through it. We're just going to talk a little bit. Because I got a chance to look at um, uh, on Twitter. And they were saying this second episode of season 14. Ratings had got to 736,000 viewers. I'm like, damn, what happened to the millions? But it was a piss poor, it was a piss poor scene because we had Kenya up there talking to uh, Sheree about nonsense, you know, because we don't really want Kenya to get too friendly with everybody because, you know, we, we need her to snap here and there. And if they treating her like royalty, it's hard for her to snap on somebody, you know what I'm saying? But, um... I'm sure you ain't gonna find somebody if it ain't number Drusador, okay? If it ain't number Drusador. But we got King, I mean, um, Sheree and um, Kenya on her sofa talking about old times, this, that, and the third. And she's enjoying, she's loving, uh, she's ecstatic, ecstatic about, um, Sheree's basement because it's finally finished. It looked like a little club scene down there, you know what I'm saying? It, re it really did look good. So Kenya couldn't hate. She couldn't hate y'all. And I wanted to, she didn't get them joggers. That's not by she, by Sheree, is it? <laughs> yeah, she's probably been doing that joggers line. She by Sheree, and that's a hot mess. They look like they're supposed to be in Rainbow. If y'all have a rainbow, like one of them discounted ma uh, malls or something. I don't know what Sheree got this mess going with her couture wearing still. But anyway, basically, Kenya was dropping tea. She was being a little bone collector, you know what I'm saying. She was dropping a little tea to uh, Sheree about Drusilla. Damn, I said Drusilla. Drew. Uh, well, it might be her name, isn't it? But anyway, uh, Drew was uh, had hired or had uh, hired one of her past assistants. And he was just dropping tea here and there on uh, Miss Sheree. Saying that Sheree don't pay him. You know, he can't wait for his uh, electricity to be turned off. He got to pay his rent. And she had to just stop messing with her because she wasn't paying for the service. Okay. And, you know, of course, Sheree didn't take it so well. She was saying, you know, Drew the one over there having marital problems. She needed to be worried about that and stay, stay out of her business. I said, okay, girl, I hear it. I hear it, girl. But it's the girl telling the truth, Sheree. Because, you know, you have a little bit of uh, being in the press, being in the news about not paying contractors for your house not paying you know uh people to watch your mom just silly shit you know now if you got the money you got the funds go and pay these folk because you know but you being a reality star uh or personality person uh, you, you know they're gonna put your shit out there they're gonna put, i ain't putting your shit out there i only put your shit out there when it's already out there and i just gotta talk about it you know what i'm saying just have a cute conversation about it with my family over here on the tube okay but you know that's all the really conversation Sheree and her had. Like I said, it could have been a scene, could have been deleted and, and all that. And this scene with Marlo and Candy talking about Marlo saying, we can be friends, you know. Why you don't ever call me over your house? Why you don't ever come over to my house? And Candy looking at her like she crazy as hell. I, I, I said, Candy, you should have asked what she drinking or smoking. Was she on the ooey and smoked a little bit too much cognac? What, what, what is it? Because she over there with Dennis McKinley. He's sponsoring her 
peach party by Nyack. You know that Nyack? Okay, that's that's Dennis McKinley. Uh, uh, drink of choice. And he owns that. That's a black billionaire in the making, okay? But I think he's already a billionaire right now. But he's just trying to keep it on the low low. And I like I like men like that. I like women like that. Don't let everybody know your hand. Don't be showing all this shit like Portia be doing. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because then we'll really be counting your coins. And shit ain't going to be adding up. Then we got to come on social media and blast you out for it. But basically, uh, Marlo was over there telling Candy, you know, they need to be better at their friendship. And, you know, Candy was throwing shots at her like, you know, it take two to tangle. And you ain't been uh, telling me to come over your house. You know, so, you know, hey, we was on a raw spot at that one time when you were dating my god brother. And then you come back to the uh, the fam and in circle and you try to play me like I'm, I'm, I'm a violin or something or I'm a trumpet. So, uh-uh, we ain't going with that shit. So she basically saying, you know, she you know, just giving us an eye full of her being an aunt and a mom to her sister's kids. Because I don't know, I think Marlo said her, her sister had mental illness and whatever she did got her in jail. But it is just what it is, okay? Everybody got a little something in their family, you know? Everybody got a little something in their family, including mine, you know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. But um, I, they could have left that shit out too. They could have left this whole scene out. But I like this scene now. Now, Tanya, my, I mean, Sanya is my girl. Okay, I don't know why she reminds me of Tanya. Does she look like Tanya to y'all? Just a little bit. Put it down in the comments. Let me know. Or is, am I tripping? And I be tripping half the time. So, y'all don't tell me. You need your eyes checked. Even though, I mean, this year. So, did we get our eyes checked? No, we got them last year. So, it's time for us to get our eyes checked this summer. So, yeah. But, no, she kind of favored. She's a little darker complected than uh, Tanya. But, she just put me in the mind of uh, Tanya. Even though I know this is Tanya, okay? But, honey, her mama gave me everything. Ratchetness. uh, Messy. Just doing too much over the top. I like her mama. Okay? I like I like Tanya mama. She was like, I ain't going to bring y'all asses nothing back when I go back home to Jamaica. Because y'all just, y'all just ratchet. Y'all just crazy as hell. I spent my own money. Had my own time. And thought about y'all issues. And y'all sitting up here fighting over beef patties. She said, you, you, she was talking to a younger uh, daughter. She said, you need to stay out of people beef patties. And, and and I guess she was telling saying you need to cook your own damn beef patties. <laughs> but mama had got frustrated when they were fussing back about them beef patties. I like okay, something else going on with mama. She just taking it out on the babies. Okay, okay, what's going on, mama? What's going on, mama? Oh, but you know she was just going through her little pots and uh, saying you had ordered her and this that and third. She pretty much wanted her to get to testing out them pots. You know what I'm saying? Like go on and kick. Uh, get that Creole going on. Get that Jamaican food up there, Mama. And she looking at like both of them. I'm, you know, y'all crazy as hell. And uh, Tanya says she gonna boil an egg or cook in that little frying pan. <laughs> I don't know where she got that little thing from, but it just is what it is. Then Tanya was asking her sister, uh, "How you like? How you like living here in Atlanta?" You know, and her mom said she might well like it. She she ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> Oh, that's all me and my mama, right? Just let let me answer the question. Don't answer the shit for me. Let me answer my sister. Okay, can I do that, mama? Can I do that? That's what I'm all uh, the little sister was saying. She said, I think she asked me about that. She asked you. She asked me, and I like it. It's, it's okay, but I'm like all nine of them in the house together. I really want to see them digs. Take me from room to room to flow to flow and see how we're doing this. But you know, hey, if the Asian folks can do it, be in one, be 17 of them in one house, a one four bedroom house, and they can get it done and have Mercedes and, and all these other nice cars and have pretty, pretty sitting bank accounts. Hell, that's what's wrong with us now. You know, we can't be a whole tribe and just all stay up in one house. Just buy one big ass mansion and have. Ten families live, living up there now. You know, the ones that you can get along with. And you know how much money you have? Shit. They got it on lock. They got it on lock. See, black folk, they don't like to live together. <laughs> they got to have their own thing going on. Well, that's some. I ain't going to generalize. It's just some, okay? Some in the black community that do that mess. But, you know, it just is what it is. But they were fussing. I liked it. Uh, it wasn't as boring as the scene with Kenya trying to play nice with uh, Sheree. And the damn show one, uh, it was better than uh, what Marla was giving us trying to go over there and be camaraderies, pen pals and pals and all that with Candy. Trying to build a, a false friendship. 
I'm like, Marla knows she done stepped out of there and got that house that she done built from the ground up. She needs to make her coins on this Real Housewives of Atlanta platform. Yes, she do. Because then she's going to be going belly up and bankrupt and ain't going to be able to move in that house. But, you know, Marla got that mysterious money going on. Yeah, she got that mysterious money going on. So we don't ever know what time and what place Marla going to show up and show out on our asses. Okay. Yes, Lord. All right. But then we need that situation. We run on over there to Drew Sador house, okay? And all this bullshit she got going on. I'm just like, drop Ralph like a bad, 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 sinister habit, okay? Girl, if you can't throw him <coughs> out with the quickness, I don't know what to say for you. I want to know where your mama at, because that woman used to get on Ralph's last nerve, okay? And I was loving every minute of it. I was lo loving every minute of it. Honey, whoo, Ralph would take your spirit. <laughs> he would take your spirit, dissolve it, and there you would be, an empty soul vessel. Because he got so much hate. I don't know what he doing to Drew Sador. It kind of reminded me back when Ma was doing the same shit to Kenya. Making her look like a total asshole and fool. He wasn't paying attention to her when she was talking to him. He talked with the baby more than he had the conversation with his wife, which was Kenya. And I see this whole shit playing back in Drew Sador and Ralph's relationship. I'm like, babies, babies, babies. Have some self-worth. If you don't love yourself enough to not be able to put up with this little punk over here calling himself to be a man. And all thing he doing is doing pulling those manip manipulative strings on you. Girl, I don't know what to say for you. I don't want to see you on Real Housewives of Atlanta no more. Cause I don't like to see black women kowtowing down till they supposed to be mate. Okay? And then he talking about he understood the assignment or what the uh what the uh one of the counselors i think they go to two or three different counselors but one of them i guess he favored and he said i gotta put myself first <laughs> i was like if you don't sit yourself down so well okay now you put god first then if you are the type of man that follows the lord and you treat everybody with kindness you see what i'm saying <clears throat> and your structure and the will of God, then you wouldn't be like you wouldn't be acting like this asshole. I mean, you a giant asshole that needs to be buried or somewhere, okay? But you know, he said he's after God and then his wife and then his children. I said, and we talking about a godly man. We ain't talking about true Ralph. You are pathetic. You are lesser than a man, okay? Because anybody can sit up there, can dish it out. For the negativity. But when somebody put the negativity on you. You got to have hell raised. Okay. And I'm like. Uh uh. Drew Sador. Drop him. Because I don't want to see y'all carry on. I don't know how many episodes we have. But I don't want to see nine. Ten more episodes of you and Ralph trying to get it together. I'm saying leave it alone, baby, because we watched this shit last season. And we don't want to watch this stuff now in this season. Okay, and that's all you had to give us with this back and forth shit again. We're Ralph. Where well, you can't speak your mind. You can't speak your inner thoughts without upsetting his balance. You got to creep around. You got to... uh. Make yourself say the right things because you feel like you're walking on eggshells and you say the wrong thing. He going to blow up on you. Girl, I'm like, pack his bags. He might think you pack it for yourself to leave somewhere. Pack his bags up and say, I'll send the rest of storage because you got to go. I'm trying to figure out what the hell Ralph do for a living. Sure, you know what Ralph do for a living. I know, and now the rest of society don't know either. <laughs> Like, this is too funny. This is too funny. But I ain't got nothing else to say about that. Because y'all saw the scene. Y'all saw her crying and carrying on. I'm like, girl, don't waste your tears no more. Dry up them tears, honey. Take them fears of being alone and just cast them to the side. And get on your knees and talk to the Lord. But tell the Lord to bless you with somebody else. Because evidently you set yourself up with this nut. God didn't send you this man. Because any time you feel the Lord need to send you something. And what you feel... Lord sent, if it's causing you stress, if it's causing you to be uneasy with yourself, 
if it's causing you to be angry half of the time, trust and believe that's not from the Lord. That's from Satan. Okay. Or well, that's just you being on your uh, down and on your look. You just chose this ego. Okay. Move from there. I don't think Candy and Todd are in a bad situation. I think they're doing it all for television's sake. But I do believe whatever came out of his mouth, talking about his name went on your house, Candy. He meant that shit. And I'm like, I'm glad. Girl, I'm glad you didn't let him get on that house deed. Okay, whatever you got before him, that's yours. And if you leave it in your will to your daughter, that's even better. Okay, because I believe Riley would do right with the rest of the kinfolk. I think she'll do right by them. We ain't going to entrust Mama Joyce because she has a uh, lack of a, 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 a memory sometimes. <laughs> she might think that you left it solely for her and she'll forget about everybody. She'll give them a little, little something, but not like how you've been splurging and, and, and uh, sharing love with your family. I mean, each and every one of them, okay? And maybe that's what, you know, the Lord put on your heart. If you ever made it, you would take care of each one of your family. And that's okay. If that's the way you floss, baby girl, that's the way you floss. I ain't got nothing wrong with that. And I don't see no wrong in that. But child, baby. Honey, when he said that, I almost fell to the floor. I said, hallelujah, Candy, do got some sense. Now, people will be out there talking about you, Candy, in the streets, about you keep your man, you do this for your man, you a sugar mama. But, honey, baby, when it comes to them coins, you be like lockdown city. <laughs> you be like the Brinks truck. You got to have armed, uh, what do you call it, armed guards at all times, Okay. You got bullets and you're ready to spray them if you have to. Okay. It might be them little pellet guns like the Suka Soap. <laughs> but I don't know. You might be uh, packing some heat. Because I know you hang around uh, Tiny Hotel. And with that T.I. as a husband. I know y'all got. Y'all y'all packed. I know y'all strapped on. Y'all are strapped. Oh, but anyway. Uh, yeah. He had something he said about I could take some of this fun. But first of all, I want to know why the hell your downstairs look like a flea market or something. What the hell are you doing, Can All these storage places we have in Georgia. You could at least bought a, a unit and put that stuff in there. I mean, girl, I heard you was a penny pincher, but this is ridiculous, okay? This, and you shouldn't even show that shit on TV, because they already think black folks are just, you know, hoarders and all of that, and we don't keep things decent here and there. Ain't no sense of you having no parts of the house that you can't really show nobody you up there showing up I, we don't want to see that transparent shit can we don't want to see it all right and i don't even know why you let todd change the setting of the pool anyway i liked it the way it was okay when you had the house when you first bought the house but he gonna go change it and put it like black lacquer or something and then all the furniture all the stuff from olg all the furniture all up in there instead of water per modified or uh, we call it uh, uh purified water with all the chemicals to kill all the bugs and the, and, and the uh the uh other diseases that can be in the pool you know you get it to a certain uh what chemical level and it's supposed to balance out everything and everything kosher and stuff like that you won't catch no gang green when you're up in there swimming but uh you know, the chloride is right where it needs to be, I guess, well, pH level or whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? But, uh, yeah. Got her down there uh, fussing with him about taking some uh, furniture to New Jersey where he's supposed to call himself have a condo. A condo that he shared with somebody very significant in his life. And he probably was going to marry her. But they had bought a condo together. And then when the relationship didn't work out. And everything went soft. She didn't want to pay for shit. She left Todd high and dry. Okay. And he had to. I don't, I don't want to say he used your money, Ken. I'm hoping he didn't use your money. But anyway, he bought the unit himself. And he decided to keep the apartment. Now, why? I don't know. But he did clarify us very clearly. Because you were getting on his ass about that. That he was basically running around here. Taking about five, four or five trips a year. By himself or with his boys. Girl do you have a PI? Do you have a private, in uh, private investigator following his ass candy? Let me know. Because if you don't you should. You should put one on retainer. So you can get the shit worked out amicably. In case he flip out. And you don't call him with somebody. And you didn't. he didn't invite you to the soiree. <laughs> he 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? We know you have an open relationship, and we know that you're by. So, but I thought y'all had to give each other the tag on who y'all were going to be loving, and y'all had to be a part of that loving session. You see what I'm saying? So, he might be trying to do things without you. All right, just like he got called downtown one time. I think it was in the news. You know, somebody had picked him up. He was coming out of a hotel at 7 something in the morning, you know, doing that shame walk. And, and you wasn't nowhere to be found, Candy. So I don't know if he had a little uh, soiree or a little tryst without you. But he was getting it in with something. And it sure wasn't no business proposal going on. All right. Not to like the corporate setting where you're inking deals and they're paying you for your services. No. I think he was paying somebody for their services. And I think it was a good old uh, love joint for him. But that's just allegedly, that's just my mind carrying on here and there, okay? Take it for what it's worth, and Take it for what it's worth. But, girl, I give you the gold seal of approval, stamp of approval. His name ain't nowhere on the house, so that's good. But he, he said, you know, he, he'll give you a key to his little digs. And Ken, like, turned up her nose, looked at him like she wanted to slap the shit out of him. And I was like, okay, you, you probably should have did it, Ken. It would have been good effects, and the ratings probably would have been skyrocketing up, you know, through the roof. Because like they said, it's, it's pretty low. It's, we're looking kind of dim this second season for The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I know y'all did all that marketing. We're getting this little photo um, photo snapshot of y'all looking all pretty and stuff of that nature. Y'all went out and paid, you know, uh, your own money for this little filming y'all were doing. And photographing y'all were doing. And one of my family members said, y'all will get it back because it's a tax write-off. That's okay, yeah, yeah, because that's their business and their independent contractors. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. So, because first I was getting on y'all asses for doing that shit. Because I don't come for this little inter uh, photograph y'all take of, you know, what y'all wearing and this, that, and the third. I could care less about it. Hell, it could be just a peach up there and it's a real housewives of Atlanta. And I would tune in, you know what I'm saying? I didn't need to have all y'all lovely faces all dressed up like that and giving us fashion and face. That's Cynthia, remember? That's Cynthia. But anyway, that was pretty much it, y'all. Um, uh, Candy had straightened out Todd and she let us uh, find out through Todd's... Uh, on his own uh, accountants of everything, his own mouth. He said that his name wasn't on the mansion, the little baby mansion, a mansion, two mansions sitting on one lot, uh, acres that um, she bought way back yonder. Uh, I want to say maybe, it has, it has been about seven, eight years now she's been in that house, y'all, but she paid for a lock, sock, and barrel. So she pretty much could do whatever she wanted to do, and that's in her name. So I'm like, girl, kudos, kudos. Let him have that condo, honey. Let him have the shit. He might need it if y'all don't make it, okay? He might have to hightail it back to New Jersey. But, uh, yeah, it was it's okay episode, y'all. It was okay. It wasn't giving me too much to go on. Because, like I said, if you gonna, if Real Housewives of Atlanta going to continuously show us a symbolic type recap of Kenya's marriage to Mark showing and, and going over to Ralph and uh, Drew Sedora as a storyline. These ratings going to fall below 736. It's going to probably be in the foes the next time we see it. If we have to keep looking at Drew Sedora and Ralph and their comments and goings. When we already know where they need to be at the uh, divorce court. Okay, They need to be having divorce sessions on how to co-parent. And and it, and we, I can't annul their marriage because they've been married, you know, for more than uh, a few weeks or a few months. Okay, so we can't annul it, but we should damn sure can go up there and, and plea for us to be amicably iris. What do you call it? Ir. Wait a minute. Irrecyclable difference. Irre. I don't know. What I'm talking. About. It's an irre. Hell, I don't know. But it's something about y'all can't get it on. Y'all can't get it on no more with each other. Irrecyclable differences. I think that's what they call it. But either or. Yeah, it didn't work with Kenya and Mark. And y'all going down the same line. And y'all just need to just uh, get out of it. Okay? Because it's just looking like a train wreck on TV. And I can imagine what's really going on in person. Okay? He, Rob probably ain't coming home at night. 
he probably spending it somewhere else. You know, he's talking about 50 year old women. He ain't uh, trying to run after them because they're 50 years old. I'm like, brother, have you seen 50 and 60 and 70 year olds in the black race? They looking pretty fine and nice, okay? So I don't know what you're talking about. And I wish they would have gave us a picture of the lady that was supposed to have been calling herself giving uh, Ralph a massage, okay? Well, she probably wanted to massage something else, but it just is what it is. We won't go there. But the people that know, y'all know what I'm talking about. But, y'all, that's all I got of uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 14, Episode 2, all aboard the Gaslight Express. To me, it was all centered on Drew Store and uh, Ralph and their comings and goings of a non-existent, loveless type union. Okay. But that's all I got. And I'll see y'all next video, guys. Bye.